I am here to talk about improving page speed performance with Vue 3. Cameraman, I'm sorry, I cannot stay behind that. There's no way in my life. So I'm, I think these are for me to keep me still, but <laughs> here I am. <laughs> uh, so I'm Tom Dale. I'm in charge of the customer success team at Imagex. It's an image and video uh, SaaS media optimization company, um, but I am always dealing with customers to help them with their page speed. That's what I love doing. I love going over their sites, doing page speed insights, seeing what I can do to improve their sites. And uh, I also, you can find me talking about doing headless solutions, converting to headless. And uh, I do it with Next and Gatsby and Next, but it's no secret, I am a Vue Next lover, so here I am. And I want to combine both these passions to teach you all about PageSpeed Insights, making your site the best score possible with Vue. So if you're not familiar with Google PageSpeed Insights or Lighthouse, same thing. Uh, it's going to measure that your site performance. And in the last year, they made a really big change uh, to add in Core Web Vitals. So largest contentful paint, time to interactive, cumulative layout shift. If those things, no idea what they are. This is going to be a great talk as well, all right? <laughs> Um, and uh, like I mentioned, I liked doing uh, conversions to Vue 3 uh, and doing headless. Well, if you're unfamiliar with Jamstack or headless terms, uh, just real quick, Jamstack, JavaScript, API, mark up. So uh, doing anything where you switch to Vue and, and doing data that's maybe coming from a different uh, location like a headless CMS or Word, you know, something like that, that's going to be Jamstack headless world and it's going to be really good for performance. Um, you could definitely do that with Vue, even if you do it with uh, Next 2 and Vite and SSR and bring us that in Next 3, please. That's going to be amazing, all right? <laughs> um, so here we go. So I like Star Wars a little bit, and I like blogging about it and, and, and making fun websites. I made one a long time ago in WordPress, and uh, I want to update it because I want to watch Obi-Wan and I want to share funny things about Obi-Wan as well. So I've decided for the talk to take my WordPress and convert it to Vue and make it headless. So along my journey, I'm going to do page speed scores on the WordPress site, move it to Vue 3, show you what I did, do page speed there, show how it improved it, and then anything that's left remaining that didn't get to me 100, I'm going to show you how to knock those out in Vue 3 as well. Uh, I'm not ambitious enough to live code here, but I promise I will live code and put it up on the internet, so if you follow me on Twitter or something like that, you will see the live code there as well, all right? Um, so here's my wonderful WordPress. I did a page speed score for it. It's 58 in mobile, which if you're familiar to page speed insights, isn't actually that bad. <laughs> but um, I do want to make it 100. Um, you'll notice there's mobile and desktop, so desktop is usually always a better score in page speed. So if you, um, if you, if you just do mobile first, <laughs> then it's going to make desktop good as well, right? So I'm going to focus on mobile here. Um, just to give you a little background on the WordPress site, uh, I am using like flywheel, so it is quasi-performance. So that's how we're getting a 58, and it's pretty simple. It's not like I'm doing ads and making money on my blog. It's just a funsy blog. So here we are at 58. All right, so let's take that and let's look at what the PageSpeed score is and figure out what to fix. So the main thing I want to focus on is those metrics, right? So you're going to see first contentful paint. That's the amount of time it takes for the first thing to actually show up visually for you. Uh, you have the speed index, which is the measure of how long it takes everything to load. You have the largest contentful paint, which is I don't know, the perceived uh, most important thing, maybe above the fold, uh, that how long it takes that to load. Some of these numbers are funny because I feel like when you run the site, you're like, it didn't take that long. Whatever the number is, all that matters is that Google's upset and it gave me a red or a yellow, right? And I don't want them to be upset at me, so I want them to be green. So that's, that's the real important thing here. Um, okay, uh, and LCP specifically is a core web vital that I mentioned. So that's a definite thing we want to focus on, all right? Uh, time to interactive, that's how much time it takes till you can actually move around and do something with the site. Um, Things, it should be below three seconds, right? If, if you, no one's going to wait longer than that to interact with a bad Star Wars blog. So let's speed that up here. Uh, total blocking time is, is, a, is a number that, it's essentially like different critical assets that may pause everything from loading. So how much things are, are there blocking that. And then uh, cumulative layout shift is another core of vital and it's essentially a percentage. So 14% of the content of the site shifted after I loaded. You might 
I don't know, if you take uh, transit or whatever and check on your phone some article and then you're reading and then it, everything jolts and you can't see anything anymore, that's what it's wanting to eradicate, all right? So those are the metrics I'm gonna fo focus on and then there's this opportunity field. In that field, uh, I'm not gonna say all of them now because each slide is gonna be getting rid of them, but you're gonna see, we're gonna go through each of these opportunities. At the bottom of Google PageSpeed, it always says, these opportunities are suggestions, they don't actually affect the performance uh, score, but they do make the page faster. Well, if you make the page faster, it is gonna make the performance higher and I'll show you, okay? So uh, let's move it to view three. All right, so I'm gonna make a simple uh, app, uh, a Vite app. I did never pronounce it that way, so here I am. <laughs> but in view three in Vite, um, I'm gonna use, if you're not familiar with view, uh, I'm gonna use V4. So that's a really simple way to uh, take my posts and, and reuse code for every blog post there is. It's gonna give me a new one, right? Um, when I made the app, it just made it real simple, just two components, the header, which is my uh, hero image at the top with some text, and then the posts below. Um, now, how do I get my posts from WordPress onto View 3? Well, you don't need to actually leave uh, WordPress. You could just connect to headless WordPress, right? And it's one thing for me to do that because it's my fun blog, but if it's an actual company, you have all these people that create content, and if they're used to making things on WordPress, you don't have to take that away from them. Let them still do it. You don't have to retrain, you don't have to do anything. Leave that be the same while you get to have your fun in the front end and make things performant, but you don't affect everyone else's experience at the company. So that's a very possible thing, and if you do that, you could use uh, Apollo GraphQL, would be a great thing to use. Uh, maybe you'll watch Alex's videos on, on View Class, how to do that, I don't know, but it, it's not that hard at all. Um, there's also plenty of headless CMSs you could move the content to, uh, and they also use GraphQL or have different plugins to go to View 3, it's real simple. Uh, I, I heard a rumor we all like Tailwind CSS, so here I am, I did it as well. I don't even know if I could write CSS anymore, I don't, that's, <laughs> so Tailwind it is. Um, to stay scientific, I'm not gonna change the images in this first change. I just want to uh, purely see the idea of how the performance changes going from WordPress to Vue 3, okay? Uh, and then I'll deploy it uh, in Vercel as well. All right, so here we go. Uh, I ran it, I did it, I did my such hard work, and we had an immediate 18 point difference going from WordPress to Vue 3. So you can actually see those metrics I talked about, and, and you can see how they just adjusted and changed. So you had that first contentful paint, it went from 2.9 seconds to 1.1, so that's really great. Uh, the time to interactive, that was a humongous number. It went from 6.5 to 1.2, so that's again great, because we wanted it below three, right? So we're well below three, that's, that's, that's good. Uh, the speed index was a big change, 5.7 to 1.1. Uh, the LCP, it went down a little from 9.9 .9 to 7.5, not a ton, because we didn't really change that aspect of the site, so we will. And uh, the CLS, I didn't intend to make it better. Maybe I did that accidentally with Tailwind. Oh, great, but here we are. <laughs> All right, but so we know the metrics changed, but why did Vue 3, like what did Vue 3 actually do that made this more performant? So the answer is, is I, I, so on that site, the WordPress one, it was 38 requests, 1.8 megabytes. The new site, again, exact same content, is now 14 requests, 1.4 megabytes. Those extra 24 requests, they're all just JavaScript and CSS. And one of the opportunities in PageSpeed Insights, it was elim eliminate render blocking resources. That's what those 24 requests were. They were bad JavaScript, bad CSS, stopping everything from loading, slowing it down, and that's what immediately Vue 3 went at and eradicated. They're looking at the CSS, we went from 127 kilobytes to 2.6. That's a crazy number, that is amazing. JavaScript, 114 to 25. So that, those two things are the immediate benefits of going from some other thing to Vue 3, just eliminating all those render blocking resources and, and going to a more performance site. All right, so we have a great score now, we can just go home and this talk's done, lunch. No way. <laughs> all right, so let's make it better. Uh, I mentioned this idea of going through the opportunities, right? We're, we're gonna clock out each one and, and, and get rid of them. So if we look at the list of opportunities, what's coming up is use video formats for animated content. 
So I did, uh, I did use a GIF in my blog and it's making it really slow and bad and I'm a bad person for doing it. But I like silly GIFs, that's, that's silly. I wanna use it, right? Well, um, I, I have a horrible secret to share with all of you. The internet has like been lying with us so much. Most big websites don't actually use GIFs when they tell you they're GIFs. GIFs on Twitter are not GIFs, they're videos. GIFs on Giphy are not GIFs, they're videos. You convert your GIFs to videos to make things fast. Uh, I can remember working with Reddit back in 2016, we converted all their GIFs with Imagex to video, and it was like an unbelievable performance change. Like it was a big thing. That's what you all should be doing to your sites too. Have fun with your funny little GIFs, but let's actually make them videos. It'll make it so much more performant. And Google is telling us here to do that, right? So now that I know I hate GIFs secretly, how do I <laughs> fix them, right? Well, in Vue, VF is, a, VF is like amazing to do that, right? Because I had my V4 and I'm recycling that basic content for each post, right? I need to have something inside that to actually make a decision to either serve a video tag for that MP4 or to serve an image tag, right? So I could do something simple and just label each blog as like animation or not, right? And then in the VF, I just wrote post.animation. Below that, put my video tag. There's four things you put in the video tag to make it pretend to be a GIF. Autoplay, loop, muted, and plays in line. That makes it look like a GIF. At the top, you can see my little thing recording. The one on the right really is a video. It looks identically the same, but it's 250 kilobytes. The GIF was 1.1. That's a massive difference, right? Um, you could go one step further and do uh, like a, like a, what's the WebP? Yeah, the, the, the WebM, there you go. Do WebM too, and that'd be great for Chrome. You'd have even more performant, right? Um, yeah, so I did the VF, and then else I did image tag. All right, so that should make my site better, right? Let's run page speed again. 95, up from 76 to 95, we're in the green, we're really happy here. And specifically, the LCP score went down from 7.5 to 2.2. That was the big thing on the score, right? And it's because it perceived my GIF towards the top to be the thing above the fold that was slowing down the site, and, and, and that's what was the big thing to correct. And, and we'll see a little bit later down the line, as you fix LCPs, uh, a new LCP that's heavier will appear, and then you have to fix that one, right? So guess what, we should just fix everything, and then it'll be good. But uh, so that's where we're going to go from here. So I'm at a 95. Um, we did just actually see a slight uptick in some other things like time to interactive because of the video tag. It made it just slightly slower because of this blocking time. But we will fix that. I promise. Well, let's do it. Um, so like we said, I'm not we're not going to lunch till we get to 100. So here we go. <laughs> Um, next opportunity listed is serve images in next generation formats. It says next generation because whatever the newest thing that comes out is, it, it's going to be the next thing I have to do. So it's ever changing, right? Currently, right now, they mean AVIF and WebP. WebP is, I don't know, eight years old maybe, and AVIF is like a year old. Um, you have, each of them works in different browsers. Overall, they just have superior compression compared to JPEG and PNG. They support transparency. They look way better. And, but the problem is, is they only work in some browsers. You have to be smart enough to do one in each one, i.e. will never support anything except Vite. Was it Vite? So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we have to be smart enough to change our formats constantly, right? So let's, let's tackle this thought. Um, so how to convert to next gen. There's, there's two real basic options, I guess. You have like a, a manual option where you could create a picture wrapper and inside there you could list sources and you'd have to uh, get an actual AVIF image, a WebP, a JPEG, whatever images you want to do, list them all. And then uh, when, you, when you load it on the site, the browser is going to go through in that picture wrapper and go through each source and figure out which one is compatible and works. And, and that would work and that would be good. Um, throw in like a responsive design and you're having a kajillion different images here and it's a nightmare. So it's, you know, for the sake of us, we don't really want to do this manual way. Um, Google is actually going to recommend using uh, something they call a modern image CDN. Um, so I do work at Imagex, so I think I'm one of those. So I'm going to use <laughs> Imagex, okay? Uh, but you can use a lot of different ones, do whatever you want, as long as we make 
the internet better, I'm not gonna be upset at you, okay? Um, so I go to Imagix and I'm gonna use something called auto format. It's gonna intelligently switch the format depending what browser someone's in to always make sure we have the best possible one. Uh, whatever that next generation was, one is around the corner, we won't have to go back and fix our sites. It'll always be the best one. That's, that's the benefit of using a solution like that. Um, it's also gonna throw in like responsive design and other good things. So I'm using a view SDK. So you can see I changed the image tag slightly to now IX image and then threw in some of those uh, parameters. Uh, Imagix is like a URL based API. So you put, this will just generate all the different things in the URL and uh, it'll, be, it'll be served, cached, all the good things we need for Jamstack, right? All right, so we, we did that and Oh, we're close, 98. All right, so we, we, we got just general, all those good improvements. The TTI went back down, the blocking time went down, even the LCP went down. Why did the LCP go down? Because all of the images got this added, right? So, so everything, all of those went down a little bit, so that was good. Um, and not only do we make the site faster, we also improve the quality of the images. If you remember, I was using whatever images were coming from WordPress, so those were kind of compressed nasty too. Um, okay, so we're at 98. The last thing left, it says, is to preload the largest contentful paint image. Um, so it's kind of an interesting idea. Like I did do a bunch of things to optimize that, that uh, LCP image. It thinks it's the hero image currently, by the way, because that, and, and it usually is. When you make a site and you have that top image that's extra wide at the top, that's usually gonna be your, your LCP culprit, right? Um, unless you have like a GIF somewhere towards the top. Um, so we did optimize it and it is running faster because we did AVIF, uh, but really what this wants us to do now is to have it actually load sooner. Because essentially, you know, after the, uh, the, the HTML starts getting loaded, then the style sheets and things are gonna load, then the images are gonna load. It wants us to take that LCP image and have it load right when all the style sheets load as well. So it's, it's loading fast, but let's just start loading it fast sooner and that's gonna eradicate something called resource load delay. All right, so uh, to do that in view three, uh, it's really easy. Uh, just go to your index HTML. You can go in the head section there and just do a link rel preload as image and then whatever the URL is for the LCP, put it in there. Um, in PageSpeed Insights, there is a section where it tells you what the LCP is, so you can just see it there and, and enter it. Um, you can see in my example, I was using uh, Unsplash uh, for that image at the top. Um, Unsplash does uh, use Imagix, so I get that same idea of the, the smart formatting and all that stuff as well, so I can use that no problem. All right, do, do we think we're gonna be good at 100? Is this gonna be it? Is this so gonna be it? Okay, we got rid of all the opportunities. <laughs> um, so just really the bottom line of the story is the opportunities just try to eradicate those and that should get you the best possible score you can get. The ones you saw with my site aren't gonna be necessarily the same as your site. So stalk me at lunch, anywhere, follow me around, Twitter, whatever. I am so happy to look at your site and, and look at PageSpeed with you and give ideas to make it faster. I really do enjoy doing it and it, it's no burden on me. I, I really wanna help uh, in the view community or if you're not and you wanna switch to it, and so, so I want to be there for you, all right? Um, so if you want to, uh, every different version of the site, I, I literally did deploy on Rissell, so you can see every step of the way. Um, I will do a live code of it and put it uh, on YouTube, on the ImageX YouTube, and I'm gonna talk about it on my Twitter. You can find me at Latscale Headless. You can email me, Tom, at ImageX. Thanks so much, what, what questions do you all have? Okay, here we go. So, hello, hello. Okay. Yep. So, obviously, one of the things you want to do is uh, do some uh, service worker caching. Um, the problem is, is like a lot of the times your your view mounts and stuff actually start happening before your your service worker is even registered. Do you have any tips and tricks on on how to get that as fast as possible? And, and get it done before view really starts. Hmm, that's a good, bring in the good ones, I love it. Uh, I don't know, I mean, 
are, are, just for the curiosity's sake, are you doing Vue or, or Next? And I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, if Next can be a little bit better at it. Um, what is that? OK, just Vue, yeah. Let me, let me noodle on it. I'm sitting behind you so I can, I can get you a good answer and whisper to you. <laughs> so I, I typically use the created lifecycle hook for anything unless I'm going to be interacting with the DOM. And then I can use mounted. Mm -hmm. But I was recently, I was interviewing someone and she asked me a question. I was like, I don't know. So she mentioned, does created block first paint? I thought it did not, but I actually didn't know the answer. I don't think it does if you deploy it via Vercel, right? Because especially if you're using like SS, like SSR, right? Because then it's going to take the JavaScript and convert it to HTML and put it that way. And I think you particularly want to do like SSR instead of SPA for performance reasons, right? Because if you do in the SPA, then Google may not understand the JavaScript coming from that. Versus if you're doing SSR, it's going to switch it the other way to something it understands. It can combine that with like putting in good meta tags. I think you're going to avoid that idea of, of of the SEO there. So I would think you really should focus on the idea of doing the SSR and SSG, and I bet that won't see uh, the mount. OK. We have some more questions. Are you ready for more questions? I can love it, it, yeah. Excellent. I ended early because this is all I want to do. <laughs> um, for web applications that are never going to touch the internet, um, what, do you have any insight tools that you can use to get some of these suggestions? So, oh, okay, uh, so you, you can actually, when you're in Chrome, uh, even though it's not hooked to the internet, you can still do the inspect and get the Lighthouse audit to get the same idea of the scores, right? And when you do the Lighthouse audit, it, there is like different sections that you can choose performance. Is that what you're saying in the sense that it's not on the internet, but you, but you want, yeah, yeah, so that's exactly what you could do. Also, if it's a thing you have to log into, you can use the Chrome inspect and do Lighthouse audit as well. Because if you do it through PageSpeed Insights, PageSpeed Insights isn't going to be able to log into it, right? But if you perusing Netflix and you're curious what the performance is, you could log in and then use the Chrome Inspect and get that audit. And that'll work that way for you. Amazing. We have another question up here. Hi. Uh, that was great. Thanks. Um, hey. I was curious about the, the IX image like that yeah. they were using from the USDK. So did that replace? your requirement to check if it was an animated image as well, or do you still have to have the view? Image? No, yeah, yeah, so I did a, uh, I mean, I could probably show, but, I, so in the, in the VF, I did the VF, uh, if it's animated, I did a video tag, and then if it's not uh, animated, I did this image tag, so it didn't replace it. I did, I, I am still doing both, and it's because I want the animated GIF to actually be in the video tag and, and be a video, yeah. Cool. Any more questions? Did it, oh, you want to hear it? Get my steps in today. A super quick one. I'm yeah. just wondering if I can expect like the same out of the box performance for V2 because you did V3. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there, there's certainly some aspects that aren't there, right? Uh, like, like it's not natively going to co come with V, right? And that, that's in the, the dev performance aspect. Uh, but I think doing I mean, so Vue 2, I would say Next 2 is actually really great performance-wise, and I would do that because it's going to be really, really good with SSR, SSG. So I would say if you're familiar with Vue 2 and haven't moved up, do Next 2. But yes, you, you can definitely expect a lot of the good performance there. Vue 3, it does have uh, certain better advantages, but if you switch to the Next 2, it has some of the things that are experimental that haven't come out in Vue 3 yet. I second that answer. I hope we have another one, lovely. So I just checked the, the three sites that you have on screen, and none of them is giving 100 right now. And I checked one twice, <laughs> and it's 80, and it went I, from 85 to 99. Oh, so no. my question is, it, why, are, why are those variations happening? The, the C should be 100, because that's the last one. It's 99. 99, what is it saying is wrong? Does it say anything? <laughs> the, uh, I mean, the, the nice thing it, about PageSpeed Insights is that it really runs l live reports on it, right? So the numbers should, will, should shift around um, with a little variation. It shouldn't go down to like 85, right? It should be just a couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but does it, say like, does it say like an opportunity or something's wrong in it? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, it might go down like one or so, and, and I think that that happens with variation because it's it's really doing an actual uh, check on Chrome, and and even when you see the page speed, you can see at the bottom it tells you like uh, like where it ran it. See at the bottom there, you kind of see captured June second at some some time. So every single one legitimately is a different one, and depending on different tools you use, like uh, like if you deploy the Vercel. It actually will tell you the page speed scores uh, when you deploy each time as well. I think Gatsby Cloud also does that as well. And so that's like a different way to, to see the reports. And, and I think they take like an average as you keep deploying. So it's kind of interesting to see it flux and change.